Exercise 5. Modeling a heart ring. In this exercise, we will model a heart ring, starting with some curves. We'll extrude these curves, thicken them, then bridge the resulting surfaces together to make the transitions. Finally, we'll insert some edges to tighten up the shape. We'll also introduce you to a very useful command that you can use to relax your surface and make it smoother after you bridge two surfaces together. The Make Uniform command. So, we've started with two curves, one for our shank and one for the heart on the top of the ring. You can see that we've left some space in between the curves on purpose. We'll be joining surfaces that we create from the two curves, and leaving some space gives us room for the surfaces to eventually bridge between each other smoothly. Also, we've intentionally made these curves with minimal control points. The control points on the curves will determine how many control points are on the T-splines model, and it's good modeling practice to keep the number of control points as small as possible. It keeps your model smoother and easier to work with. So, now we'll introduce how to extrude curves to make a T-spline surface. First, we'll show the long way, then a faster way. The long way is to select the curve, then click the Extrude button. Now, a thin T-spline surface has been extruded from the curve and you are now selecting an edge of the surface. The next thing to do is to drag that edge with the manipulator to pull the surface and give it some surface area. In this instance, we'll switch to the scale manipulator and scale inwards the new surface edge to make a ribboned heart surface. The fast way to extrude a surface is to use the Alt key. If you select a curve, hold down the Alt key and then drag a manipulator, you will extrude the curve to create a surface instead of moving the curve. This behavior is the same as when you use the Alt key to extrude faces like we learned in Exercise 2. Also, just like we learned in Exercise 2, when you undo an extrusion, you need to hit the Undo button twice, once to undo the movement and the second to undo the extrusion. Next, we'll thicken these ribboned surfaces into volumes. The Thicken command will offset the vertices of the original surface to create an editable solid. It's important to note that this will not be an exact offset of the surface. We offset the vertices. However, in many cases, depending on your tolerance, it can be good enough. When using the Thicken command, you can type an exact distance in the command line that you want the vertices to be offset, or you can manually just move the surfaces inside the command. We'll show you how to do both. With the heart, we'll eyeball the thicken distance manually. Just run the thicken command, select the heart surface, then drag with your cursor to show how thick you'd like it to be. With the shank, we'll type in an exact distance to get the shank thickness. You'll see that these are smooth, editable surfaces now. We can still move the surface grips, even though it's a solid. After you run commands, such as thicken or bridge, if the surface seems to be tight or have unusual tension, you can run the make uniform command. This command makes all the knot intervals of the surface the same, which is a fancy way to say that it relaxes the surface. When designers attend our live training classes, we frequently get remarks that learning this one command paid for the entire trip. So remember to make use of the make uniform command if your surface seems to have unusual tension and will make your models look more smooth. Now we'll duplicate the ring shank just by copying and pasting and place the copy near the tip of the heart. To bridge the heart with the shank we'll use the T-spines bridge command. The bridge command can bridge faces to faces or edges to edges, and it creates a new ring of faces to bridge the gap between the two original surfaces. The main requirement for this command is that the number of border edges on the selections that you are bridging between needs to either be the same or that one is a multiple of the other. In this instance, we'll bridge one face to one face. Before we start the command, I'll switch to box mode and make sure that the faces are positioned in a way so that the bridge will be straightforward. If one of my shanks is underneath the heart, the bridge surface will need to twist around, and it won't be as smooth. 
It's hard to tell all that in just smooth mode, so by switching to box mode I can see the real positions of the control points and the other parts of the surface topology. Once you're in the command, select the faces you will bridge to each other. Next, you need to make sure that the alignment is correct. You'll see a dotted line seam with arrows. You want to align the seam so that it continues the natural isocurve flow from one surface to the other. The arrows just need to be both pointed in the right direction. Click an arrow to reverse its direction. There are also options of the command to change the number of segments, which means the rows of faces added, turn on and off a preview, and bridge along a curve in the scene. We'll turn on the preview so that we can see, in box mode, what this new surface will look like. This helps us see if there is any unwanted twist. After we complete the command, you can see the two surfaces are now bridged together. We'll repeat the bridge command three times to get the other faces bridged together. Look at the smooth transitions you get from bridge. You can tweak, push, and pull these to fine-tune the transitions. Next, we'll move different parts of the surface around to fine-tune our model. As part of this, we'll move the two shanks closer together, in preparation for our next step, merging the two shanks together. When we merge two surfaces together, we'll actually be merging the edges together, creating no new geometry. This is different from bridging, where we created new faces to bridge a gap. Merging works only on naked edges, so we need to delete some faces first to get naked edges in the right place in the model. We'll delete these four interior faces on each side of the ring. You'll notice that once you introduce naked edges into the middle of the T-spline, undesired creases will shoot into the model. Don't worry, these will go away once we resolve the naked edges by merging them together. To merge, the edges do not need to be close together. In fact, they can be as far apart as you'd like. However, we want to minimize any distortion that would come from moving the edges an unusually large distance, so it's good to be pretty close. We'll use a window selection dragging from left to right to select just the edges we want to merge. There will be eight of them total, and you can see that in the T-Spline's heads-up display. Then we run TS Merge. Once the merge is completed, you can see that everything went smooth again because there are no longer naked edges. Now that we've arrived at the base shape of the ring that we want, it's time to iterate. One thing I'd like to have more control over is the softness of all the transitions. It would be nice to make them a bit more crisp. I don't have enough control points right now to do that, so the way to make crisper edges is to use the TS Insert Edge command. We learned how to use this command in exercise 3, modeling a hair dryer. If I want to tighten up the inside of the heart, an edge loop will work great. I can select one edge, then select Loop from the drop-down menu. Or, I can use a shortcut and just double-click the edge, and it will select the loop. I can then insert a new edge with a simple setting, and it will tighten up the inside of the heart. However, if I want to tighten up one of the side holes, loop selection won't work. When you hit a star point, all edge loops stop because it's not clear how they should exit the star point. So in this instance, selecting an edge ring will do the trick. Then, I can insert an edge that runs perpendicular to this edge ring all the way around the hole. Once my heart is tweaked correctly, I can convert it to a rhino surface, and now it's a watertight solid ready for manufacturing.